human rights defenders like Amadadine Baali and blogger Hossein Derasha, who are serving right now in, in an Iranian prison. And according to human rights groups, Mr. Derakshan has been physically and psychologically abused while in prison. He just received a 19 and a half year sentence for, you guessed it, propaganda against the regime, a charge that you hear so often for such a range of individuals. Just this past May, our commission held an event on prisoners of conscience in Iran at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. And one of our panelists was uh, Roxana Saveri, as well as Maziar Bahari, a Newsweek journalist who was tortured while held in prison for reporting the aftermath of the 2009 elections. What was interesting is that information came to light at this event that three revolutionary court judges in Iran are responsible for the vast majority of unfair and harsh sentences handed down to political prisoners and other security detainees. Such prisoners include journalists, human rights activists, ethnic and religious minorities, and peaceful protesters. I want to mention those three names. Three judges are Judge Mogli Sin, Judge Salabati, and Judge Pirabasi. They're known for conducting swift trials and imposing lengthy prison terms as well as the death penalty without any semblance of due process. Roxanne explained at this event that she was sentenced to eight years in prison on bogus espionage charges by Judge Mobley said. This is the same judge who presided over the case of the seven behind leaders. So you see these connections over and over again. And also earlier this year at the UN Human Rights Council, Iran was reviewed by the international community on its human rights record. And of course the government rejected a number of recommendations from countries urging it to comply with international human rights standards including those related to freedom of religion or belief. During the review, the head of delegation, Secretary General of the High Council for Human Rights and the Judiciary, Mr. Mohammed Larajani, and other delegation members claimed that religious minorities in Iran are protected under Iran's constitution and allowed to engage in religious activity freely. However, these claims are contrary to the facts on the ground very clearly. In addition, Larajani specifically responded to a question about the status of Baha'is in Iran by saying that no Baha'i had ever been prosecuted because of his or her faith, but only because of, quote, cult-like activity. Now, our commission was very concerned when we did not see the international community speaking out to this vigorously fabricated statement. It's very important that governments take out the opportunity to assert themselves in these circumstances to, to demonstrate that these officials are simply fabricating the truth. The government of Iran continues to engage in systematic, ongoing violations, including prolonged detention, torture, and executions based primarily or entirely on the religion of the accused. The dominant system of theocracy practiced in Iran, the guardianship of the jurists, was created by the late Ayatollah Khomeini and is a form of Islamism that emphasizes clerical authoritarianism. Thus, Iran's constitution, by its very own right, inherently discriminates against its citizens on the basis of religion or belief. Now, during the past year, the Iranian government's poor record has deteriorated even worse, especially for religious minorities, particularly the Baha'is, but also Christians and Sufi Muslims. Physical attacks, harassment, detentions, arrests, and imprisonment has intensified. Even the recognized non-Muslim minorities, the Jews, Armenian and Assyrian Christians, and Zoroastrians, protected under Iran's constitution, are increasingly reporting some discrimination in Iran. But as mentioned previously, dissident Muslims were increasingly subject to abuse, and several were sentenced to death and executed for waging war against God, as I mentioned. The government has imposed harsh prison sentences on prominent reformers from the Shiite majority, many of whom have been tried on charges of insulting Islam, criticizing the Islamic Republic, and publishing materials that allegedly deviate from Islamic standards. 
The government has been repressing its citizens on the basis of religious identity for years, well before the revolution in Iran. But since the June 2009 elections, it's increasingly manipulated the reach of its religious laws to silence, and in some cases put to death, Shia Muslims, the majority population, simply for exercising their internationally protected rights of freedom of expression and freedom of thought and conscience. Ayatollah Mohammed Khazami Burujedi, a senior Shiite cleric who advocates the separation of religion and state in Iran, has been in prison for the past four years. A lot of people don't know about his case. He and 17 of his fathers were initially sentenced to death but the sentences were later withdrawn on appeal. He's serving an 11-year sentence and reportedly in poor health, and he's been subject to physical abuse while in prison. He's actually spoken out while in prison about those being targeted for their religion, including Baha'is and other minorities. Sufi and Sunni Muslim leaders are regularly intimidated and harassed by intelligence and security services and report widespread official discrimination. The Sunni Muslim community has not been able to build a Sunni mosque in, in Tehran to this day. And Sufi dervishes have been imprisoned in recent years. And I want to mention just two names, because their names don't get the kind of attention either. Hossein Zaraya and Jamshid Lak are two Sufi leaders who, as we speak, are in prison simply for exercising their beliefs. Now, since the beginning of the revolution some 30 years ago, Significant numbers of non-Muslim minority communities have fled Iran for fear of persecution. In fact, there were nearly 80,000 Jews in Iran at the time of the revolution. Today, there's only about 25,000 left. But it is the biggest Jewish population in the region outside of Israel. Thousands of Christians have fled. And converts to Christianity face a death sentence if convicted on apostasy charges, as do Baha'is. To name a few of the Christians who are in prison again as we speak tonight. Hamid Shafi'i, Christian pastor. Rehane Avajari. And Yusuf Nardakhani are in prison. Mr. Nardakhani was charged with apostasy just last month in northern Iran. His lawyer is appealing the, the sentence after finding serious procedural errors, which you find throughout all these cases. The reason why Mr. Nardakani is charged with apostasy? For simply questioning Islamic education in the country. <laughs> As I mentioned, a consistent stream of violent and inflammatory statements by political and religious leaders and an increase in harassment and imprisonment and physical attacks of these groups has led to a renewal of the kind of oppression we haven't seen in Iran since the early 1980s. <coughs> Now, with the uh, advent of the revolution, the clerics took the opportunity to systematize efforts to eradicate the Baha'i community, the most egregious case, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of freedom of religion or belief in Iran. Between 1978 and 1998, more than 200 Baha'is have been executed or killed by authorities. Hundreds more Baha'is have been imprisoned and tortured, tens of thousands deprived of jobs, pensions, businesses, and educational opportunities. There is no doubt that in recent years, the government is in the midst of a re-escalation of systematic efforts to eliminate the Baha'i community as a viable entity in Iranian society. These indicators include efforts to identify and monitor Baha'is, revolving door arrests, arresting them, releasing them, arresting them, releasing them, the escalating violence, societal and otherwise, targeting of Baha'i leadership, official anti-Baha'i media campaigns, which are rampant, and the ongoing denial of access to higher education, the destruction of important Baha'i holy sites, and arguably the most heinous of all, the targeting of Baha'i school children. It really doesn't get more despicable that, than that when you think of young kids who are being expelled from their classrooms, or being intimidated and harassed in front of other students. But in my estimation, the bigger tragedy